Hey everybody, wanted to do a quick walkthrough on the code for the Lego Walkie Talkie. Uh, this is going to be very quick, very straightforward. The code is very simple here, and in fact most of it is borrowed from an example that was put out by Adafruit. So to start out, you're going to have to have the correct board. We've got all that stuff linked uh, in the description of the video and in the article. But basically it's this RF52 Feather. It's this one right here. And so to use that within the Arduino coding environment, you're going to have to install the um, the board package here from Adafruit, um, on their website, they have all the instructions on how to do this. If you're familiar at all with Arduino, then you'll understand uh, putting new boards into the software. Anyway, you have to make sure that this is installed so that you can actually write things to the board. Once you've got all that stuff taken care of, basically this code pulled from an example that is installed with that uh, board setup, and I use that as the basis. So a lot of this stuff, and he even mentions it up here in the comments, but a lot of this stuff it was already here. Okay, so I only added a few things, and we're just going to walk through what those are. Obviously, if you're not familiar with what this project is, then this isn't going to make any sense, but essentially it is a Bluetooth keyboard. It's sending key presses to a device, some other device connected to your Arduino or your Bluefruit board by Bluetooth. Okay, so... Uh, this was all from the example code. It sets up the, the Bluetooth, the BLE. Here is the Bluetooth stuff. I defined three pins because I have three buttons. You could do as many as you want to. Uh, these are the actual pins on the board. These are analog pins, so I've got 0, 2, and 4. Those are the numbers. These are characters that are going to be used later, so I gave them an initial value of the at symbol, but you could do anything there. It doesn't really matter. I just had to give it something. Okay, so these are all, this is just setting up some variables. I've also set up um, some characters for each one of the buttons. So we've got button one, two, and three. Those send out a different value. Okay, so you could set these to whatever you want as well. Um, I have a variable here, a Boolean, that has key pressed. And this will be used down there later on, but it starts out being defined as false. Okay, so that's all basic uh, setup of variables and of things that are going to be used later on. We go to the typical setup function here. Uh, we set up the serial, and the speed here matters, so make sure that if you are looking at the serial monitor in this piece of software, you have the same baud rate here, otherwise you won't be able to see anything sent back to the, the serial monitor. So basically we set up the serial monitor, and then we do a big while loop for the rest of the setup all the way down to here. And this is while it's waiting for the serial to be available. Okay, And this is over the USB port uh, in that situation. So once the serial is available, it goes into that while loop and starts doing things. Basically, we set up the three pins that we defined up top here, pin button one pin, button two pin, button three pin. We're defining those based on those variables okay we're telling it up here whoop, sorry up here we're telling it which pin to use so that goes into right here and then in each one of these cases we're telling those pins to be used as input pull up they have pull up resistors already built in so you don't have to add a resistor to your button uh, this is unnecessary and should be deleted so then we go down and this is all from the uh, the example code just slightly modified. Th this sets up the blue fruit. So this sets up the all the, the Bluetooth stuff that it needs. And the only thing I changed here was I set the name. And this is the name that will show up. If you connect this device to your phone, this is the name that will show up in your Bluetooth settings. Uh, you know, just like you would see a Bluetooth speaker show up or something. This is what you'll see on your phone to give you an indication as to what this device is. You can name it whatever you want to. Uh, these are also some manufacturer and model settings about the board. You could change those if you wanted to, but there's no reason to. I'm not sure where you see them exactly, uh, but those are configurable, I guess. So after this, um, all of this stuff just uh, gets the Bluetooth going. I'm not going to explain it because it's it just it works as it is. The only thing to keep in mind here, I commented this line out. Um, this is a callback for the keyboard. So basically, if you wanted uh, this device, this board, to get a call back from your phone or from your computer or whatever you've got this connected to, 
to React, you could do that with this callback function. Now I got rid of this because I don't need it, but it was there's an example of it being used in the original example code. So if you're curious about that, um, I will add the example name up top and you can go check out that example see the full original code code if you want to. All right, so once it gets through the setup, it calls this function. This function down here is all from the example code. This broadcasts out or advertises the Bluetooth device. So it puts it out there so that your phone or computer can find it. Um, I didn't change anything here. You probably won't need to unless you have something very specific um, that you need to do with it. But this, this is what lets everything else find it. Okay. Then we get down to the main bulk of the code, and this is a loop function, which is in every Arduino sketch ever. Um, and all it's really doing, this is dead simple, all it's really doing is checking to see if you have buttons pressed. These, Like I said, they have pull-up resistors in them, so this oh, we're just looking for a low. So you have digital read, and then the pin that you want to read, which I defined up top, pins button 1 pin, button 2 pin, button 3 pin. Okay, So you're reading that. If it is low, meaning that it is pressed, then it does the code in here. So that's if button one is pressed. If button two is pressed, it does this. Button three, it press, it does this. And in each one of those cases, all it's doing is setting a variable called pressed, which I defined at the beginning, to the letter that needs to be sent out, which I defined at the top. And then I set this has key pressed equal true. And that means that just tells the next bit of code that something has been pressed and we need to react to it. We need to do something else about it. There's probably a more efficient way to write this, but honestly, I code these things on a very quick turnaround uh, at minimal functionality. They are not optimized. So if you're really looking for optimization, there's probably a more efficient way to get that same thing done. But this is also a lot more readable for people who don't really uh, have a lot of experience with the code. All right, so. If a button is pressed, it sets the character that needs to be sent. It says, yes, we've pressed a button. And then we go down to this if statement. This if statement says, if a button has been pressed, which we just told it up here that it had, we are now going to execute all of this code in the if statement. So now we're in that if statement. We can reset this to false. OK, we're done with that. We've already, we know it's pressed, so we're going to handle that in here. Uh, we release the key in the Bluetooth. This is another thing from the example code. It, it releases uh, the key latching type deal. I don't know how to explain that, but that's from that, from the example. Uh, it delays just a little bit uh, to make sure that everything is synced up, because sometimes if things happen too quickly, uh, it can get lost in the transfer of data. So this is a five millisecond delay. And then I put in a little thing here to make sure that we don't press the same key twice. Not necessarily important, but in my case, it helped uh, OBS not overreact if it was getting the same scene change twice in a row. So we check a variable that was defined up top. If it is the same as the last one that is pressed, then don't do it. So as long as those things are not the same, continue on. Otherwise, just skip this. And this is where all the action happens right here. Okay, So if it's not the same button as last time, now we're going to write it out. We're going to write the key that is pressed to the serial uh, monitor so that we can see it. You could get rid of that because it's not necessary uh, past the testing phase, really. And then we're going to send that character as a key press to the Bluetooth um, connection. So this pressed is a or D or 9 or whatever key you've defined, that's the character that will be sent as a key press to the Bluetooth connection. That's where the thing happens. That's where it gets sent out to the other device. So that's the important line here that is absolutely necessary. Um, and the rest of this is all about keeping track of things and setting up things. Okay, So it gets sent there. Then on the next line, we say last pressed equal the one that we just sent. And this is set up for the next time. So if you were to press the same button again, this if statement up here would catch it the second time. It would say the last pressed is 9, 
the current pressed is also 9, so we're going to just skip all this stuff. Okay, So this is really where things are sent and prepared for the next button press. There's another little delay here just as a safeguard, and then obviously it says request CPU to enter low power mode. That's what this wait for event is. And this is part of the example too. That's the end. That's all the code. There's nothing else down there. It's very, 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 very simple. Um, it's pretty straightforward stuff, and like I mentioned, most of this, the structure of this is borrowed from the example code. I just kind of defined three buttons and then did this little check. So be sure to go check out the example code if you have more questions. I cannot support this code. I cannot uh, respond to emails about this code, but hopefully this was helpful and gives you some ideas on how to use something like this for yourself in your projects. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.